Math everyone, let's try and solve a, a just a slightly more intricate linear inequality. Now, when you go to solve this, you have a couple of options. I think most of you would be tempted to move the 2x over. I think you like to move your x's to the left side and then move your constant to the right side. That's great. That will work. And I'll, I'll show you that version in just a moment. But for me personally, I, I've said this, I like positive coefficients. So I would actually add the 4x to this side and then subtract the 8 over. So I'm going to do it my way first. And then I'm going to do the way I think most of you would have initially gone if you weren't watching this video. So we have 3 minus 4x greater than or equal to 2x plus 8. So I personally would have added 4x to both sides and I would have subtracted 8 from both sides. All right, and then I would get a negative 5 on this side is greater than or equal to 6x. And for me, again, I personally like when I have my variable on the left side. So I would want the 6x over here and the 5 over here. But when you switch the sides like that, you have to change the direction of the inequality. So I would still need to, not still, I would need to write this instead of greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And you can see that the little, the angle, the tip of this is pointing towards the 6x here. And the, the tip of this is also still pointing towards the 6x, which is a good thing. That's what I want. So then I will divide both sides by 6. And I will wind up with x being less than or equal to negative 5 6. Okay. Now, let's say you wanted to do it the way I think most of you are used to. You say, well, I've got 3 minus 4x has to be greater than or equal to 2x plus 8. So you're going to subtract 2x here and then subtract 3. And I will get negative 6x has to be greater than or equal to positive 5. Okay, great. We're going to divide by negative 6. But we're going to remember, well, hey, we're dividing an inequality by a negative number, so I need to change that direction of the inequality. So I would still get x was less than or equal to negative 5 6. So you can see in either option, you're still getting the same inequality. And, and that's one of my favorite things about math. Like there's, there's a right answer, that's awesome. So either way, I'm gonna get x is less than or equal to negative 5 6. Now this says give the solution set an interval notation. So let's practice our interval notation. Here's our inequality. I want to graph it just so we can get some feels for that. If I was going to make my number line, right, here's my x-axis. And then I have wherever negative 5 sixths is. And because I have a less than or equal to symbol, I'm going to put a closed dot here. And less than or equal to means go to the left. So let me shade all of this. All right. Now, I need to go low to high when I write up my interval. And this low is negative infinity. So at least for the part of the x-axis I've shaded, the low is negative infinity because I'm all the way to the left. And the high is negative 5, 6. OK. Now let me move this up just a bit so we can see my work. All right. So as I go to move this into interval notation, let me write this will be my interval. I know my low is negative infinity and my high is negative 5, 6. So there's the two numbers, low to high. Great. Now we have to decide, do we want parentheses or brackets? Anytime you have an infinity, whether it's positive or negative, put the parentheses. For negative 5, 6, if it has a closed dot, you want to put a bracket. You want to include it in your answer. If this was open, because this had been a strictly less than symbol, I would have put the parentheses because I did not want to include it in my answer. Okay? We're gonna practice set notation, or excuse me, interval notation for, for the rest of the semester because it is a very common write-up as you move on into higher math. Now, I gave a whole bunch of options here. All right? And, I'll get that into view. There we go. I'm not going to read all of these, but I want you to see you can have intervals where you have two numbers and you have open parentheses, right? You can have a number and an infinity, open parentheses, a negative infinity and number, open parentheses, or maybe you have a closed bracket here against an infinity with an open parentheses. You can see there are just a ton of options. 
And take a look, all real numbers, it means we go from negative infinity to infinity, and they both get parentheses. But just take note, anytime you see a parentheses, it, I'm sorry, anytime you see an infinity, excuse me, you get a parentheses. And the numbers can swap out between either parentheses or brackets, just depending on if we have a greater than versus greater than or equal to symbol or less than versus less than or equal to symbol. So take a moment and just look at the, the notation here. We're gonna really emphasize the interval notation. If you wanna take a look at set builder notation, you're more than welcome to, but this is where my focus will be. And maybe you've dealt with set notation before. Um, if you have, great. It's just saying that this is the set of all numbers, all x's such that that's what this vertical bar means, such that a is less than x is less than b. I think it's just easier to write it from a to b using parentheses. All right, so take a look at that, and then we're going to continue solving linear inequalities. I'll see you in a few. Bye.